Zion National Park is located in southwestern Utah and offers some of the most mesmerizing landscapes in all of the American Southwest. The park might be small in size compared to some of its famous siblings, but its towering cliffs and deep canyons pack a heck of a punch and are a visual feast. The most well-known section of the park is Zion Canyon, and it is here that most visitors concentrate their stay. There are several day hiking trails in the canyon, but which are the best for visitors with only a day or two to explore the park's stunning features? I'll give you my top four hikes in Zion Canyon and why I think they're worth focusing on. But first, don't forget to give this video a like as it really helps, and please subscribe to join me on future adventures. Ready? Okay, let's go. Number four on my list is the Cayenta Trail, which can be picked up at the Grotto Shuttle Stop. This underrated gem is rated as moderate by the National Park Service, but it shouldn't be too challenging for those with hiking experience. It's a roughly two mile unpaved trail with a couple hundred feet of elevation gain that follows the west bank of the Virgin River. It's a great alternative to just viewing the canyon walls through your car or shuttle bus window. And if you get there early enough, you might just spot some mule deer or turkeys hanging out on the riverbanks. Let's revisit some of my journey along the trail. So here we are on the Cayenta Trail in Zion. I've actually got it all to myself right now, which is kind of amazing. It's very pretty here. Not too cold today, but it's just gorgeous views. The river down there. Just stunning. A bit further along the Cayenta Trail. I've stopped a bunch of times to play with the cameras, but still nobody else here, which is quite nice. And no deer down there. There are a bunch of deer and turkeys on the drive in. Never seen wild turkeys before. The deer are everywhere, but first time seeing turkeys. A convenient plus of the Cayenta Trail is that it leads directly into number three on my list, the Emerald Pools. Technically, the Emerald Pools are a small network of trails connecting the lower, middle, and upper pools. All the pools are different, and if you have the time, I'd recommend visiting all three. The lower trail is rated by the National Park Service as easy, with the other two as moderate. But as with the Cayenta, none of these are super challenging if you've got some hiking experience under your belt. If you're looking to bypass the Cayenta Trail and head straight to the pools, you can also pick up the Emerald Pools Trailhead at the Zion Lodge Shuttle Stop. Going in that direction, you'll start by heading over this bridge here and then on up to the pools. Visiting just the lower pool from this end is a 1.2 mile loop. To visit both the lower and middle pools is a 1.9 mile round trip and to tackle all three is about a two and a half mile round trip walk. As with the Cayenta Trail, there is a bit of an elevation gain, so be prepared for a little light workout. Let's revisit some of my journey along the Emerald Pools trails. I think we're almost at the upper emerald pool. Let's see what we got around the corner here. Oh, there's the lower emerald pool sign. Let's see what the sign says. Okay, middle and upper. Let's do the middle and upper first. Okay, I found the upper emerald pool. It's quite nice. Pretty quiet. Long way up. When I was here last time it was covered in ice and snow. Oh, here's some ice. No swimming though. Probably a little chilly for that, but oh, man, that's gorgeous. Here we are coming out of the other side of the Emerald Pools Trail. Just came from the upper and middle. Yeah, it's quite nice. Not too cold now. It's probably, oh, I don't know, in the 40s. We'll get up to about 50 today. Yeah. Isn't that stunning? Such a beautiful place. Number two on my list needs a little introduction. The trailhead can be found at the Grotto, the same shuttle stop as the Cayenta Trail. Once you head over the small bridge, you turn right before commencing a four to five hour, 5.4 mile round trip climb up 1500 feet 
tackling wild switchbacks and at times crossing narrow cliffs and sheer rock faces via chains bolted into the walls. This trail is not for anyone with a fear of heights. I am, of course, referring to Angel's Landing. While this trail is definitely not for everyone, for those experienced hikers who want a challenge and who want to experience what is definitely one of America's best day hikes, Angel's Landing is an unforgettable journey. The downside of this hike being so famous is that the crowds can get intense and traffic jams along the rock face chains can get a bit frustrating. To combat the congestion, as of April 1st, 2022, all hikers will need to obtain a permit, so make sure you have one before starting your adventure. Let's revisit some of my journey to the top of Angel's Landing. Okay, here we are, starting the interesting portion of Angel's Landing. And it's quite crowded at the top, so we'll see how far we get. Ugh. It's an easy. Okay. Yeah. There we are. Okay. Almost to the next chain. Woohoo! All right. Ooh. I seem to have temporarily lost the crowds. That's good. This is why. This hike is not good with crowds, but couldn't find anywhere to park this morning. So a late start. We're at the top of Angel's Landing, headed back down. There's a landing up there. Number one on my list may be obvious at this point, and it was a tough choice between number one and number two. However, as incredible as Angel's Landing is, to me, nothing can beat the sheer magic and exhilaration of walking through a river deep into a narrow gorgeous twists and turns while dwarfed by the sheer rock walls that can reach a thousand feet high. I mean, how many trails actually are a river? I am, of course, referring to the famous Zion Narrows. This trail is found at the end of Zion Canyon at the Temple of Sinawaba Shuttle Stop. To reach the Narrows entry point, you first follow Riverside Walk, which is a mile-long paved path that follows the Virgin River. Entering the Narrows from this direction is called Bottom Up, and it doesn't require a permit. You just hop in the river, and you can head up as far as Big Spring before turning around and heading back towards Riverside Walk. While you can make your Narrows experience as long or as short as you'd like, to get the full experience, you can expect to spend up to eight hours exploring with a distance covered of about nine miles round trip. While there are sections of the canyon where you can walk up on dry land, do be prepared to get wet. The depth of the water over this part of the route can vary anywhere from ankle deep to mid chest on me. I'm five feet, five inches tall for reference. So it's important to be comfortable with wading or potentially even swimming through a current if you plan on making it all the way to the Big Springs turnaround point. Make sure you're prepared with proper clothing for the journey and carry your electronics and valuables in water cases or dry bags. As epic as this experience is, the Narrows can also be an unpredictable beast at times. Always check conditions before you go and be aware that sometimes high water levels can prevent access to areas that are usually reachable. Be aware of any flash flood or cyanobacteria warnings before you head out, and if you're tackling this hike during the cooler months, make sure you are properly outfitted with a dry suit. In fact, I've got a whole separate video on hiking the Zion Narrows in the winter, so be sure and check that out. Okay, let's revisit a bit more of my journey through the Narrows. All right, we've reached our turnaround point in Zion Narrows. It gets deep over there and yeah. Got our 
motor gear on. But yeah, I think it's kind of more of the same down there. Okay, so go the walk back should be a little easier because I'm now going with the current, but the only problem is that now the current's going to be pushing me forward when sometimes I don't want to go as fast as the current wants. looking for. I missed it on the way here because I was walking too fast. A little bit of a different view. This walking stick probably saved about a dozen falls. I think that last deep section is coming up soon. Where the water goes up to about the waist. And then that's it, and we'll start to pretty shallow. Here's the start of the Narrows. There's a couple people coming back. But yeah, that's where I went, all the way down there. So there you have it, my top four hikes in Zion Canyon. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll check out these trails the next time you're in Zion. If you've got other favorite hikes in the park, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for future adventures. And if you'd like to learn more about my number one hike in deeper detail, check out my video above on tackling the narrows during the winter. Okay, see you all next time!